Hello, Internet. So I'm Malik Aaron. Aaron, I know it's been a while since I've done another uh, box office video. Um, sorry about that. A lot of stuff's been going on. Had to do with college, college crap. House got hit by a tornado. So that's that was annoying. So yeah, a lot of stuff's been going on, but here we are. We're just going to talk about June. What happened in June? I know June ended like a week ago, but hey, better late than never. So let's get into June because my God, June was awful. It was probably one of the worst months uh, box office wise I've seen in a while in terms of underperformers because there's a lot. Pretty much every movie underperformed in some way or fashion. Even the biggest movie, Toy Story 4, didn't live up to expectations. So, we're just going to look at all of these. These are, like, updated from, uh, by the time this comes out, like, yesterday. So, let's look at this. Toy Story 4, the big winner by default, because it was the only movie anyone gave a crap about. Even then, it kind of underperformed, and I had a, I had a feeling it would underperform, because I just didn't see that same level of hype that Finding Dory had, like, Incredibles 2 had. So I kind of lowballed my prediction, and turns out I was pretty much on the money with that. But it's still a hit, no matter what anyone says. It's made over 300 million domestic so far, uh, 600 million uh, worldwide. Uh, probably reach eight to 900 million, which no one's gonna call that a failure. But the fact that it didn't reach a billion is gonna disappoint Disney a little bit because, I mean, Disney they have not had the best time recently <laughs> with you know that infamous that disneyland fight <laughs> yeah but hey i mean they got the lion king coming up that's probably going to make a billion more and more than, uh more than likely make a billion since aladdin got so close to a billion so uh, yeah even when disney underperforms they win and actually before we get to any of the other losers i want you to show you something this is aladdin which was in may aladdin did better than every movie that came out in june a movie from may did better than every movie from june how sad is that and actually let's look at aladdin because aladdin has destroyed my modest expectations because i thought this movie would underperform because of a lot of you know reasons from the lackluster trailer reactions to dumbo's failure but no, it's it just, it completely destroyed everything. I think what the reason why it did so well, besides the fact that it's a broadly appealing film, is the fact that every other movie in June bombed, and none of them looked very appealing. So their loss was a Latin's gain, and a Latin gained a whole lot. Because it's made over 300 million domestic, 900 million worldwide. Yeah, this movie's undeniably the biggest hit of the summer. Who would have thought that? I know I didn't. Well, other than Endgame, of course. But that came out in April. Whatever. In terms of, like, the actual summer box office, excluding last week of April, this is no doubt the biggest hit. Which is both... Which is really sad when you think about it. So let's go over to the rest of June, because it's an absolute uh, graveyard. Secret Life of Pets 2. Illumination, what the hell happened? This was, <laughs> you had such a good track record. Let's look at your track record. For the longest time, look at this. These were all their movies previously. Secret Life of Pets 1, Despicable Me 2, Minions, The Grinch, Sing, Despicable Me 3, Despicable Me, Lorax. Look at those numbers. And then look at Secret Life of Pets. It barely made more than Hop. Hop. Yeah. That's bad. That's really bad. So, Illumination, uh, if you are going to continue, I suggest you make better films. Films that people actually want to see. Because it's clear your formula is running dry. And if you still want that cash, you're going to have to change it up a little bit. Because this clearly it shows you that people are getting tired of your movies. And not to mention that Secret Life of Pets 2 has made only a fraction of the original, which is a horrible, um, 
uh, performance for a closely timed sequel. It's only been like three years, which is two to three years. So that's the appropriate time for a sequel. Sometimes they come sooner than that. But the fact that it's made so little compared to the original. The original, actually, let's look at the original. Uh, original. This one's only made two hundred and sixty-five million dollars so far. Original made two hundred eight hundred and seventy-five. That's like a third. That's just awful. So I doubt they're gonna make a Secret Life of Pets three because why would they? Due to this horrible return. And yeah, that's Secret Life of Pets two. It bombed. Next movie, <laughs> Men in Black International. Ugh. And I thought my expectations were already low. Even on the, the thumbnail of that video, I said the reboot nobody asked for. And I was right, because no one showed up. It completely failed. $73 million total. In comparison, the other Men in Blacks, look, 250, 190, 179, 73. Look at that. That's a massive drop. And inflation-wise, it's even worse. Look at that. That's abysmal. That is absolutely abysmal. Worldwide, it's just as bad. This is abysmal. And it's clear that Sony didn't learn their lesson from Ghostbusters 2016. In fact, they're still not learning their lesson because they're doing that Charlie's Angels movie uh, reboot that no one asked for. That got a horrible reaction. And it's likely going to bomb just as bad as this, if not worse. And honestly, Sony, I don't get you. Do you like losing money? Is that your fetish? Do you like the smell of burning cash? Because that's what it looks like to me. That's why you remake these crappy... You made these crappy movies. Trying to... And also, this movie tried to go all political. It tried to be like, oh, we're going to call this humans in black, people in black. Guess what? Those movies, those people in black, humans in black movies, never will never exist because of how bad this movie did. So yeah, Sony, you need to get your act together. Stop making these crappy, really crappy remakes that, that one, no one asked for, and two, try to push some type of message, some type of political message that, because people want to go to the movies for fun. They want to escape the real world, not be reminded of it 24-7. So yeah, this movie failed, and I'm glad it did. Moving on. Dark Phoenix, no doubt the biggest bomb of 2019, no question about it. <laughs> movie cost like 200 million, doesn't say it, but it cost 200 million. Made 249 total worldwide, 64 million domestic. For comparison's sake, let's look at the other X Men movies. This is the lowest by half, half, half of the Wolverine, and that was considered an underperformer. And worldwide, it's also the lowest. Behind the first X-Men, which came out 19 years ago. Like, Jesus. <laughs> How did this... This is such a failure on such a spectacular degree. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. This is a movie that never should have been greenlit. Because you're retelling a story that's already been told before. And no one really liked it then. So what makes you think like people are going to really like it now? And then the fact that everyone knew this series was going to be rebooted in the first place. Because, you know, Marvel now has the rights now that they acquired Fox. So, what's the point of even caring about the movie? And then, like, I, and then, like there was the horrible reviews, lackluster trailers. And then they decided to go the extra mile. Just hammer that nail into the coffin by doing the whole ex-women line. Because, yeah, that's clearly going to get people into the theater. And it didn't. It didn't at all. And I know Simon Kimberg, he, he did state, to his credit, he did say that this whole thing was his fault. He takes full responsibility, which I appreciate. It's not You don't see a lot of people doing that. But seriously, man, uh, don't get out of this franchise. Don't go near this franchise ever again. G do something else. Just get away with, get away with the X-Men. Just, just leave it. Because it's dead. The series is dead for at least seven years until they reboot it with Marvel, but who knows what will happen then. But yeah, Dark Phoenix, easily the biggest bomb of not just the summer, but the entire year. And I don't think any movie is going to do worse than this, except maybe Dar Terminator, Dark Fate, and Charlie's Angels. Maybe those, but we'll see. So yeah, 
Annabelle Comes Home, another uh, uh, franchise failure. Granted, this one costs like a fraction of Dark Phoenix. It only costs like $27 million. It's already made a profit, so really who cares? But still, this is a huge just come down from the previous Conjuring movies. Because Conjuring has surprisingly been uh, very um, uh, consistent in success. I mean, look at this. 137, 117... Uh, 102, 102, 84, and then he got down to 52. Like, that's pretty disappointing. And it's only half of Annabelle creation. By the end of its run, it'll probably make like 60, 70 million, which would still be the lowest. So, uh, Warner Brothers, I'd be worried about this franchise. Even though you're still making money, it's clear that audiences might be getting tired of this. This is real sequelitis. I know they. Sequelitis is a thing that's been thrown around a lot this summer. But that's because all those other movies like Dark Phoenix, Ben Black, they were bad movies. This, I've heard, is not that bad of a movie. But still, the fact that it's, it's performing so modestly compared to the others shows that people are getting tired of this franchise. And I know there's another one, you know, the third Conjuring movie. Um, I think it's the Conjuring 3, I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. I know that's coming. And I mean, if Annabelle Creation did this well poorly by franchise standards, I'd be worried about Conjuring 3 if I were you, WB. What's next? Yesterday, finally a movie that didn't fail. <laughs> or at least it's done modestly. So far it's been like 39 million total, 26 million budget. It'll probably have decent legs. I'll probably be a sleeper hit, which, I mean, it's good. Because I, I had a feeling this would be a sleeper hit. But, I mean, it's not like a smash. It's not like it's changing the box office. It just did okay. It just did good. But I guess good is better than bombing. So, I guess, yeah. Good job, Universal. You didn't have a flop. Well, at least not yet. Uh, Child's Play. Wow, this movie just just died i had a i mean compared to like other horror remakes like you know friday the 13th halloween nightmare on elm street it uh texas chainsaw massacre this one has done so poorly in comparison and i think it's just because no one really asked for a child's play remake it just it just didn't look super appealing it just looked kind of bland from the trailers. So yeah. And as a result of bleh trailers. You get a bleh box office. And yeah. It just. it just It's just. There's nothing really to say. It just. It just exists. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. It just exists. That was Child's Play 2019. Late night. Oh wait not late night. A shaft. Oh. Wow. I was so freaking wrong in my predictions. I was ridiculously wrong. This may have been one of my worst predictions ever. Because I thought, you know, a lot of movies that have, like, you know, predominantly black cast, you'd think the black community would support it. I mean, that's what they do with, like, all the Tyler Perry movies, all the, you know, Black Panther movies. Like, a lot of movies with predominantly black cast can do at least decent because that audience shows up. But this one, they just ditched it. They just didn't care. It's only made twenty million total, which is abysmal, considering the last Shaft movie, which opened like in two thousand, opened to like twenty one million. Compared to this one's only twenty million total after like what three four weeks, so yeah, Shaft, it's a bomb. Doesn't matter what you say about it, it's a bomb. It's a failure, and there's no disputing that. It is an undeniable failure. So yeah. That's it for Shaft. What's next? Late Night. I'm glad this movie failed. I wanted this movie to fail because it just felt like... Because the trailer, it's like, oh, those white males. Pfft, we don't need no white males. We need diversity. Force diversity. That's what it looked like, and that's what you got. You got a low box office. 16 million total. So, Mini Kaling, I hope you're happy. I hope, you, I hope you're satisfied with yourself. Like last year, you complained that 
Oh, it was men, those white male men, those disgusting white people that <laughs> caused wrinkle on wrinkle on time to bomb, that caused Ocean's 8 to not do as well as it should have. It's their fault. No, it's clearly your fault because you're in a freaking bubble. You're living in your own bubble, ignoring everyone else, ignoring reality. And this is what you get. You get nothing but failure. And the worst part is that she continues to get work, which is just mind-boggling. I guess this is just how Hollywood works. You fail upward. Whenever you do something stupid, you get rewarded. Because that's how the world should work, right? Of course not. And I'm glad it failed. What's next? Oh, Anna. Wow. Just wow. What can I say? I thought this movie was going to do bad. I didn't expect it to just completely make, like, no money at all. Seven million total. I mean, what can you say? What what can I say? I thought this movie would just do modest, like a ten million opening. It couldn't even get past seven million total. Like, I guess, you know, yeah. It just failed. It failed miserably. There's nothing more I can say. It, that's just all it is. It's a failure. That's it. That That's literally it. No one cared about this movie when it came out. And no one cared about it after it came out. So, yeah. That's Anna. That's the June box office. As you can see, it was a complete crap show. <laughs> With the exception of, like, one movie. It was a complete dumpster fire. Good thing July is here, and Spider-Man Far From Home has done very, very well so far. And Lion King, despite all the complaints, will probably do well regardless, considering how Aladdin did. And then there's just a lot of just movies that just exist, like Crawl and Stuber and, uh, yeah. But I think Once Upon a Time has a chance of success. And uh, Midsommar is done pretty meh, pretty modestly. And then there's August, which is just a whole bunch of movies that are just there. And, yeah. So that's June. How many of these movies have you seen? Judging by this box office, I assume uh, you didn't see too many movies. <laughs> but let me know which movies you did see. Uh... Like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Uh, if you want to go see my original predictions for these movies and you want to see how badly I failed at my predictions, I have two playlists, the blockbusters and the not blockbusters. Although, in hindsight, I should have switched some of those movies around. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is all. And I am out.